I guess a lot of you guys have probably noticed that Cosmic Skeptic did a two hour long conversation with Matt Dillahunty on the topic of veganism. Now, we haven't really heard from Matt on veganism since his interaction with Vegan Gains, which was a while back at this point. I think he said afterwards that he was going to release a video on the topic, but that never really came to fruition, so instead we're getting an appearance on Cosmic Skeptic's podcast. So I've cut this video down because the original's two hours long, and I don't think that anyone wants to, well, maybe some people do, but I don't think most people want to sit there for, you know, a seven hour long point by point response. So I've cut out the core bits, and I'm just going to focus on the things Matt said. But I will note that Cosmic Skeptic did an amazing job. I was truly surprised that someone who's spent so little time with veganism uh, is able to discuss it at such a good level. So big props to Cosmic Skeptic. The only criticism I have for Cosmic Skeptic is at one point he said, nothing tastes as good as meat. Well, I mean, I don't know about that. What about Beyond? Beyond tastes amazing. There's tons of very good vegan products. But, you know, setting that aside, very good job by Cosmic. Okay, now, before we get into this, I actually have to talk about something serious for just a moment. <clears throat> so um, let's talk about money. I don't really want to, but I need to because it's just a reality. So here's my Patreon right now. I'm at 775. And to just cut to the chase, this is dangerously low for me. If it goes much lower than this, I actually will just be screwed. Like this is in the unsustainable area. So um, for me to continue producing content at the level that I'm producing it, like doing it regularly and to do all the other things I'm doing in the background like running the discord you know interfacing with different people helping out activists spending a bunch of time thinking through ideas and reading up on philosophy you know even just like networking and stuff to set up streams like we have a stream coming up me vegan gains cosmic skeptic and rationality rules I've also finally got the big vegan community stream idea rolling the first one's going to have Who's going to be there? Mike the Vegan, Vegan Gains, Joey Carbstrong, James Aspie, Aaron Janice, Happy Healthy Vegan, Seb Alex, and there's probably others I'm forgetting. So just point being, to get all this stuff going, it takes a lot of my time, and I will not be able to do that if I have to work a day job. Now here's my attitude towards money. I don't expect anything from anyone, and I appreciate everything that's given. I truly appreciate everyone who supports me on Patreon, especially those of you who's, who've been around for a really long time. And I try to give back as best I can by just doing the things I do on the internet, producing content, uh, creating spaces like the Discord server, etc. So this is basically my plea to you. If you guys think that there is enough value in the content I'm providing, whatever that value might be to you, whether you find it funny, whether you like having someone just to sit there and do analysis on these, you know, like kind of carnist videos as they come out, uh, not to call this particular video a carnist video, this is just, you know, a vegan related video, um, whether it's that you've learned about philosophy or debate, whatever value you perceive, if you really want me to be able to keep up with this at the level that I'm currently doing it, please support on Patreon. So what I need to be able to do this um, comfortably, pay all my bills, which just comes down to um, rent, uh, cell phone, internet, which I have to pay a lot for internet because I have to pay for the expensive internet um, for high upload and download uh, speed for videos and for streaming, and food, then uh, I need about 200 bucks more a month. That is just the reality of the situation. I used to be up that high, and when I was that high, around a thousand bucks, I rarely ever plugged my Patreon. And that's because I don't need to be a rich man. I don't have an interest in gouging my audience for money. But again, if you want me to be able to keep this as a top priority, instead of having to back burner it while I work another job, 10 people, 20 people have got to donate 10 bucks. If you're able to do that, please do. And even if it's less, even if you can just give a dollar, you set up a Patreon account, pledge one dollar, you never have to think about it again. A buck comes out of your uh, account every month and that keeps me sustained. So again, it's going to take about 20 people giving 10 bucks a month. If there's enough people out there who see that much value that they're able to do that, then I will be able to keep doing this as my primary thing. If not, I will need to back burner it and I won't be able to keep up at the same kind of level I'm currently doing. So that is just the reality of the situation. No pressure, do whatever feels best to you, but you do need to be aware of what's actually going on. So uh, decide for yourself. Now, having said that, let's delve into the video. My, my <clears throat> position on this is fairly simple. It's not a big cornerstone of anything. I'm not necessary. So I draw a distinction between moral virtue and moral duty, and I know not everybody does. 
Okay, and if you haven't noticed, I've clipped this all up. I might have said that already, but I just want to address the kind of main things that stood out to me about what Dylan Hunty said uh, instead of going through the massive entire video. So he draws a distinction between virtue and obligation. That's fine, okay? So in the context of not stabbing a human to death for a burger, he'd say that's a moral obligation. In the context of stabbing an animal to death for a hamburger, he'd say that that's either a virtue or it might not even be a virtue. Um, so my question would be, what's true of humans that if, what's true of animals that if true of humans would cause the status, the moral status of stabbing a human to death to make them into a burger to stop being a moral obligation? For me, morality, when it comes to moral obligations, uh -huh. your, your responsibilities, where if you, you either do this or you are immoral, or if you fail to do it or you do the opposite, yeah, you okay. are immoral. Yeah. That is all about a moral contract between agents. And I'm, I'm undeniably speciesist about this, I think with potentially good reasons, but I'm, I'm not even sold on that. But in how we were talking about how other people are going to affect our lives and everything else, there's certainly this notion that uh, as human beings, we grant rights, we protect rights, and I'm now in a moral contract with other thinking agents who can express their views on morality what about the severely mentally disabled cosmic with the perfect comeback right there they are essentially i don't know what grandfathered in isn't the right thing but they are included because they are part of this group okay so what matt dillahunty said there is that he extends moral consideration based on a contract and then beings that can't directly form the contract are only counted um, because they're part of the human species, right? So um, now, first of all, just just if we were just looking at a contract-based position, that would, of course, have this hilarious conclusion of, okay, what about the humans who can't sign the contract? Um, but then what he goes to instead is he says the humans who can't, um, well, it's not a, they don't have to literally sign it, but the humans who can't acknowledge or comprehend the contract, they're just covered by virtue of being part of the human species. So to get a reductio on that, you just talk about if those humans' minds were moved into something non-human, like artificial biological life forms, computer, uh, machine substrate, um, apparently it would be fine to murder them, right? Because they can't participate in the contract and they're not part of the species. So, you know, Matt, you can kind of throw up as many, uh, as many parts to your moral system as you want. If, if none of them just come down to direct consideration for sentient beings, there's always going to be a reductio where I grant you the things you care about and just find some situation where you're exploiting a sentient being and it's going to look kind of wacky. So again, the idea is beings that he cares about morally are covered by a contract and the humans who aren't able to participate in the social contract, they're covered by virtue of being part of the human species. So all you do is you take those humans who aren't part of the contract, so that doesn't apply to them. They're only covered by their human shell, so that's a shell morality position, and you just remove the shell. You say if we transfer their mind into something non-human, and then he'd have to say they don't have value or reformulate his position. By and large, it's only in the modern world, in cities and things like that that one truly has access to the privileged status to be vegan uh -huh. for the for most of our history and in most places that just wasn't an option you you know there were health issues and other things right so just notice how many of the standard excuses we're getting and also look i don't want to be too harsh on dillahunty i don't know that you know i can't read the guy's soul and i do want to say that i actually think he's really good on a lot of topics um, I think, in all honesty, I think that what is happening here, this is just my subjective evaluation, you know, take it with a big grain of salt. Um, I think he's just got massive cognitive bias. I think that he's just got bias clouding his mind because Matt is smarter than this. That's, um, that's my honest opinion. Um, so what he just said there about, you know, for a lot of human history or in certain locations, people can't go vegan. None of it applies to him, right? Now, I won't try to straw man him and say he's offering that as his reason for not going vegan. But it's just worth noticing. When he's throwing up all these different kind of qualms with veganism, that's just one that doesn't even remotely apply to him. And Cosmic Skeptic does point that out. I don't have the clip of it here, but, you know, good on Cosmic for getting that. I am, for the record, opposed to the way we go about getting food on many occasions, meat. Mm -hmm. um, I'm opposed to animal torture and animal cruelty. 
So that's just the classic, you know, anti-factory farming, anti-cruelty virtue signal, but then he goes and buys the product. So what's that really worth? Uh, there are ethical vegans who say, well, you know, killing it's cruel, no matter whether it suffers or not. Right. So um, it's also really easy to pick silly vegan positions and rip on them. So obviously we can come up with situations where killing would be morally justified. Um, but even if we're if we're going to. So there's there's situations where killing is justified. But, you know, Matt is suggesting that maybe the killing of animals would be justified um, so long as there's no suffering involved in the killing. So the killing for the purpose of a burger, because, look, I can find a situation where it's justified to kill an animal. Right. With <laughs> maybe even if there's suffering involved, like say an animal's trying to attack you or something. Right. So there's no there's no dogmatism here. I'm happy to acknowledge there's situations where it's justified. But I think what Matt is really suggesting there is that killing an animal painlessly for a hamburger would be justified. And then on my view, it's just going to be like, look, do you think that killing a human painlessly for a hamburger is morally justified? And if the answer is no to that, then what's true of the animal that if true of the human would justify killing them painlessly for a hamburger? And I'm not necessarily sure that the thing is, I don't think we can boil anything down so neatly because even if you ate a purely vegan diet, if you walk behind a combine harvesting food, we're doing a lot of destruction to animals, you know, not just insects, but, you know, voles and varmints and things like that live out there, yep. physically killing them and disrupting a habitat. So I think it's it's kind of a little bit of cherry picking in some sense to say, oh, I'm doing this and it's better. Well, I don't know why it would be cherry picking to say that it's better. I mean, there's clearly vastly more suffering if we have the you know global holocaust of billions of animals happening versus whether we're just farming crops. Um, so also think about a world where we farm crops and a world where we don't and everyone starves to death, death. ask where there's more well-being. Well, obviously in the world where we do farm the crops. Um, now, if you just want to say there's something more optimal than farming the crops, then I'm certainly down to move in that direction. But if the idea is everyone should go and start their own farm or something like there's, first of all, no good reason to think that um, that is an efficient way to do things, right? That would eat up a huge amount of people's time. Uh, it wouldn't be as effective as these large systems that we have. It also wouldn't be as good for the environment. And there is just such a massive uh, opportunity cost there of all the things that the population could be doing if they didn't all have to run a farm, that it starts seeming like a kind of ridiculous thing to suggest. So I don't have a problem with veganism, which was one of the, why, one of the reasons why this keeps coming up. And that's the classic, I don't have a problem with veganism virtue signal. Well, you know, I'm glad that you don't, but what I'm interested in is whether we can actually persuade you of veganism. I think you said at one point that you do consider it to be a moral virtue. You think it is a good thing? I am to convinced do. that it's likely a moral virtue. Okay. Um, I don't. It's, it's you know, I, the variables are so complex that I and I haven't spent that much time actually <laughs> digging in on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just so complicated, I can't figure it out. I mean, look, Matt, if if you think that it's not obvious that the world would be better if we didn't have a global animal holocaust. I mean, that just seems like completely wacky territory to me, right? We're just talking about it being a virtue, which I take to mean that it would be not obligatory, but just at minimum a morally preferable situation if we weren't doing this. I mean, in order to say that, you just have to take a position that completely discounts the suffering of animals. And I mean, that's a, gonna be a difficult thing to do because I'd want you to spell out what exactly is true of the animal that if true of the human would cause you to discount their suffering? And I don't think you're able to give a satisfactory answer to that. My view, which is about whether or not you're, whether there's something necessarily immoral about eating meat. Uh, I don't know that, in, I don't know how I could be convinced of that. Now, this is like this really low hanging fruit kind of like stupid vegan argument that Matt likes to go after. Um, now, I don't want to attribute malice to him. Like, it could genuinely be that he's just heard stupid vegans make this point and it annoys him. Like, let's just assume that's the case, right? I'm not going to assume he's lying or just trying to, you know, kind of like cherry pick crappy vegan arguments. But um, obviously, any, any, you know, vegan who has a good grasp of the philosophy is going to say, okay, well, obviously eating meat per se isn't wrong. It depends what's involved in the... Um, what, what's involved to get that meat there in front of you? Um, I think what I've seen from some 
some ethical vegans just have you know garbage argument and so do some atheists and so do i on some stuff i'm sure but even amongst the best they seem to devalue the impact to one's life with regard to financial costs time costs uh pleasure now at no point would i ever suggest that the mere pleasurable experience somebody might have with doing something becomes the overriding factor of whether or not it's moral but i also would never say that it's irrelevant okay um so matt's saying that even the best vegans discount um things like the pleasure derived from eating meat or um, the difficulty involved in going vegan or the price. Well, no, obviously those are standard objections that are raised to veganism. Those are things that obviously we take into consideration, but then determine to be insufficient to justify a global Holocaust, right? So um, my question is if, uh, so first of all, with respect to price, um, I mean, you can eat a vegan diet that's just as cheap. It just depends if you're going to, um, if you're going to buy like a bunch of fancy foods or not. So if the cost of avoiding supporting a human Holocaust was the minor inconvenience of not being able to eat certain dishes, uh, the price being the same, and maybe, maybe there's just certain tastes that you will no longer experience, would you say that that justifies supporting the human Holocaust? Presumably not. So then the question is what's true of animals that if true of humans um, would cause you to say that those factors justify supporting the human Holocaust? I'm not drawing the line at humans. I'm gradually increasing the line based on the moral contracts we already have, okay. which is why I'm not going to go with pets or primates and things like that. Okay, so he's he's saying, I, I don't know why I put in two clips like this. He's just kind of saying the same thing again, which like, you know, pets and primates, um, these animals are covered by some kind of contract. It's not that they have any sort of intrinsic value. I just want to make sure I got that right, so I'm going to back up a second. At no you know, garbage argument, and so do some atheists, and so do I. Financial costs, time costs, uh, pleasure. Now, at no point would I ever suggest that the mere pleasurable experience somebody might have with doing something becomes the overriding factor of whether or not it's moral. But I also would never say that it's irrelevant. I'm not drawing the line at humans. I'm gradually increasing the line based on the moral contracts we already have. Okay. So gradually increasing the line based on the contract. So it's like he covers all humans, right? And the humans who can't sign contracts, they're just covered by virtue of being human. And then beings outside of that are only covered by virtue of their contract. Um, so that just starts looking really funny. Again, I can give the same kind of reductio as earlier. I mean, I can I could point to beings who are like I could point to a hyper sentient being that wouldn't actually. Well, I guess it would meet the criteria of being able to sign a contract. So never mind, that's fine. Um, but you can take the same example as earlier. You can say, okay, we've got a human who can't sign the contract. If they're moved out of their human shell, then apparently it's fine to murder them. On Matt's view, which is why you're not going to go with pets or primates and things like that. Have you considered the impact, the emotional impact on a cow of having, you know, its offspring removed from it and then, you know, continue to give milk? And the answer at that time was, no, I hadn't considered that at all. And my answer now is, I don't know that we can actually assess the psychological trauma of a cow. So Matt doubts that a cow is suffering when its infant is stolen. But the thing is, Matt seems to accept that animals are suffering when they're being stabbed or something like this, or when they're displaying other behaviors that indicate that they're feeling bad. Um, now, the question is just, what's the basis for that double standard of using behavior in one case to um, make an assessment that the animal's feeling bad and then disregarding behavior in the other case? I don't know. The, the meat that you, will, that, that you will have the opportunity of consuming this evening will have come from a factory farm. We can say that with- Quite probably, with, yeah. Now that's pretty funny when earlier he was saying he opposes animal cruelty and you know factory farming or whatever it was he said but you know tonight i'm gonna eat it anyway one of the things to consider is what's the impact on humans if i stop eating meat sure uh, i mean 
So for instance, uh, eating... Can, can you see that Cosmic's impulse is to go and point out all the positive impacts it's going to have on humans? I know that's what he's going to say, but Dill Hunty cuts him off. The agricultural industry... Farmers, is, ranchers, truckers, all of them lose business. It, it's also... And that contributes to the greater good of humans. Right. Cosmic goes on to talk about climate change there. But um, so then you just take the same situation, right? Again, just a consistency test. You say, okay, so um, if it's the case that there's humans who are being holocausted and um, we, in order to stop the Holocaust, some people who are making money off of Holocaust industries are going to lose out. Um, would Matt think that that justifies perpetuating the Holocaust? Now, I know from later in the video when talking about slavery, I'm assuming I can analogize his position on the Holocaust and slavery, that his answer to that is no, it wouldn't be justified. We should end it anyway, regardless of what impact it has on these people. So again, the question is just what's true of animals that if true of humans would cause him to change that position. Is it the case that we couldn't make improvements such that we are such as those industries are no longer major contributing factors to fact to climate change and yet still have those industries and not not practically no especially because the a lot of the emissions come from the animals themselves so well, me th are the, those animals aren't going to go away when we stop eating them right so that's that's the classic like you know we'll be overrun with animals well no as uh, demand drops, supply will drop, and then eventually we're going to be breed. We're going to breed them in, uh, less of them into existence until eventually the overall quantity of animals goes down. It's not going to be what I used to jokingly refer to as the farmed animal apocalypse. So maybe the better solution is to do like a Thanos snap and eliminate half the human beings. Now there is a hilarious position. So. If we were holocausting humans for food, I think that Matt would advocate ending the holocaust as opposed to getting rid of um, the majority of the humans in order to <laughs> lessen the environmental burden of the holocaust. If you actually watch this, they're talking in the context of the environment right now. So again, like I've got pretty much the same question for Matt all the way through this video. I'm just wondering what's true of animals that if true of humans would cause you to say that it's preferable to reduce the population of humans then end a human holocaust if the goal is to reduce global warming. This is, I think my objection here isn't even on moral grounds. It's on a matter of practicality. Okay. Because we know the overwhelming majority of people aren't going to take this step. Okay, right. So if the overwhelming majority of people won't take a step, let's just grant that for a second, does that mean that you don't have the moral obligation? Say it were the case that most people wouldn't start murdering infants, would you think that that means you don't have the moral obligation to personally stop murdering infants? Presumably not, so again, what's true of animals that if true of humans would cause you to change your position with respect to your obligation to not murder infants if others won't stop? Pretty thing. But I also would say that my moral contract is reciprocal. So I don't think a shark is immoral for trying to eat me, and therefore I'm not completely sure how it could be immoral for me to eat a shark. It's probably not a, immoral for a lion to rape you. I love Cosmic. Like, his comebacks are just so good here. Yeah. But it would probably be immoral if you went and raped I'm not an sure. Animal. <laughs> <laughs> He's just not sure if it's immoral to rape an animal. Well, <laughs> you know, okay. Um, but again, so the idea is the shark can't sign a contract. So again, if we take a human who can't sign a contract, on Matt's view, they're just covered by virtue of being part of the species, transmit their mind out of the human body, and then apparently they have no value. So, I mean, I guess it would be fine to holocaust the minds of humans who um can't sign contracts as long as we get them out of those pesky human shells let's just let's just for, hy for the sake of hypothetical sure. let's say that it is true that we have a society that currently owns slaves like pre-civil war us sure and it is the case that if we illegalize slave owning it's going to cause mass disruption to the economy this is what i said this is what i meant earlier when i said that cosmic ends up kind of like calling him on this and people who have built their careers and dedicated their lives to uh, to slave trading are going to be abs in absolute ruin. Would that be enough for you to say, well, okay, actually, let's just illegalize it in stages, or let's not illegalize it? Or would you no. say, no, this has to end now? And there's yeah, simply but for no completely moral different excuse. reasons, and that is those people, we were in a state of hypocrisy where there were human <laughs> beings who should have had rights who were being denied rights. 
that's not the same situation with the animals where and, and I mean you can argue that perhaps they should have these rights mm -hmm. but we're talking about well, we, they, they I, had they, they, they had rights that were essentially codified that we were diminishing for other human beings I think we both do think that animals should have rights the, the nature of those rights are different but like do you think a dog should have a right not to be tortured and killed and I mean a moral right, not if if not a legal right. Okay. Um, Imagine not having a speedy answer to that question. I don't know that I view things in terms in terms of moral rights. I mean, to me, I, I, I'm only it's like when we talked about abortion earlier. I don't tend to debate the morality of abortion ever. Right. I only care about the legal status of abortion. Okay. That's it. If you if if somebody's convinced it's immoral. I don't care. But then, but then, look. So the reason why I've asked you about it is because that's what you said in relation to slavery. Right. I think that they had legal rights that were being ignored. Right. So that's just kind of a hilarious position. So, like, the reason that it's important to overthrow slavery and that outweighs, you know, the whatever, whatever um, value is being derived um, by, in, you know, industries profiting off of slavery so the, the reason why it's important to outlaw slavery even though people are profiting off it is apparently because we have codified human rights and um slavery is violating those rights and then he's trying to say there's a disanalogy with animals they don't have codified rights that are being violated well i mean this is just hilarious because there's no way that if you push matt on this and you say Okay, well, like, let's go back to when there was slavery and there weren't codified rights. Do you think slavery was right then? Or do, do you think there was that at that point there uh, it, it would have been fine to not illegalize slavery because people are uh, profiting off it? You know he's going to say no. And you know this if anyone's like watched a bit of Matt because sometimes he gets in it with Christians who do slavery apologetics because they don't want to admit the Bible said some kind of fucked up things. So... I know full well that even if there aren't codified human rights, Matt's not going to take the position that, oh yeah, you know, let slavery keep going. There's some industries that make money off it. Wouldn't want to hurt those people. He's going to say slavery wrong, get rid of it. So then the question becomes what's true of the animal that if true of the human would cause you to change that position. Because of medical issues, I have certain dietary restrictions. Right. Now, this is something that I just have like extra little patience for when it comes from a public figure. Matt is loved by thousands of tens, probably hundreds of thousands of people, right? There are plenty of people who will spend their time to help you plan out the perfect vegan diet that works just for you, right? I don't even think this objection works well if you don't have those people who are willing to help you because you can just do some basic research, which also Matt is beyond smart enough to do the research necessary to figure out his diet. But look, I mean, I will personally put you in contact with some vegan doctors my twitter is linked right below you just contact me i'll set you up they will help you plan a diet that functions perfectly for you so this excuse is off the table i will literally provide people who will help you with this if you're on an, an island that is plentiful with food that's going to keep you alive and you know nutritiously sound without killing anything you do that I just thought that one was particularly funny because the United States is ex exactly such an island. Oh, well, that's the end. <laughs> okay, so, I mean, look, I, I like Matt overall. I just think he's got a ton of bias on this topic. Cosmic did really well in that whole interview. I recommend you go watch it, you know, go up, vote it. Um, and, uh, oh yeah, closing note, just remember, guys, this is an issue for me. I want to be able to keep doing this. And if you see enough value there, if there's 20 people who see enough value in what I'm doing to put in 10 bucks a month, that's going to allow me to keep doing what I'm doing to sustain it, right? Because currently this is not sustainable. I won't be able to pay all my bills. I'll have to start doing something else for um, to make some income. Okay, um, that is all for today. Hope you liked the review. Um, till next time.